Hey there guys, yo and hello, Moonlight Butterfly Miku back again with another Moonlight Butterfly Miku's favorite games. Now, last, the first episode that I did, I should say not the last one, the first episode I did was um, of this um, recent segment I just came up with, I talked about Tekken 2, which like I said holds a, um, a lot of fond memories for me, and now we're going into, that was for the PlayStation, now we're going into the Game Boy Color. Now. Now this game definitely holds so many memories for me. I'm talking about Pokemon Crystal. Yes, Crystal. And let me tell you why Crystal. Crystal was the first Pokemon game that I myself actually owned. Meaning owned. Um, I've played Pokemon Red. I played Pokemon Blue and Yellow. But those were my cousins. They let me borrow it. So I, I didn't really own my own Pokemon game. So I was like, hmm. And then when Gold and Silver came around, I wasn't really, I don't know why. I just didn't play Gold and Silver. I don't know. I just didn't want to. But then when I saw Crystal came out, and I was like, okay. But what made it more special for me, because um, in the previous games, now we all know this. You could only play as a boy in the previous games, because mainly Pokemon was more geared toward boys back in the day. But then as they saw girls were more interested too, they said, hey. Why don't we make a girl protagonist for all the girls that want to play? So when I saw that, that made me even more anxious to get it. I said, Ma, I need this game. <laughs> I remember myself, me being so young back then. I was like, Mom, I want this. Can I get this? I begged my mom. I was like, if I do good in school, can I get Pokemon Crystal? Please, please, please. She was like, yes, yes, yes. As long as you stand by our deal, you do good in your school, I'll get you the game. I was like, so I did all my work. And lo and behold, my mom went to circuit When it was open, Circuit City. How many, I don't know how many of y'all remember that. She went to Circuit City and she got my copy of Pokemon Crystal. I was so excited to play. So I'm um, just going to have in the background, it's just going to be, I'm just doing the gym leader battles while you listen to me babble on about the game. Alright, so the game pretty much is the third installment from the Johto series. That was when, um, you know, we go into this whole new place, you know, with new Pokemon, which was a real um, treat for us because it was like, yeah, new region, new Pokemon, this is going to be great. At least I thought so. And I was happy. Like I said, I could play as a female, her right there. Her name is Chris, if you want to name her Chris, but that is her name, Chris. Or you can name her Crystal, whatever you like. But yeah, when this came out, I was just so happy, you know? It was just something new for me and it I, it made me more happy because I finally owned my own Pokemon game and from then on I got every single main game that came out after that Ruby and Sapphire, Diamond and Pearl, Black and White, you name it I had it so pretty much I have every last one of them now for my collection so my collection is almost complete the Sword and Shield is coming but that's not what we're talking about we're talking about Crystal so when Crystal came out I was just so happy I was like okay this is great and the colors the graphics are getting a little bit better Aside from red, blue, and yellow, it was a lot better, a lot more crisp. And so when it came to starter Pokemon um, in Pokemon Crystal, I chose Cyndaquil, of course. Yeah, I chose Cyndaquil because Cyndaquil is awesome. So there you go. I always thought Cyndaquil, like when I looked it up and I did my research on the three starters, it was Chikorita, Totodile, and Cyndaquil. But I just felt more gravitated towards Cyndaquil because it was just so like, you know, that cute little squinty eyes, that flame on its back. It was amazing. It was great. So I started with Cyndaquil and we went through our journey. Now, I'll be honest with you back then, I wasn't that skilled in Pokemon as I am now. I didn't know too much about, you know, weaknesses and all that stuff. I was still learning. Even though I did play Red, Blue, and Yellow, but I was still, you know, a little rusty. I'm get, I was just getting into Pokemon. I wasn't a full-blown Pokemon fan like I am now. So back then, I was just getting into the franchise and learning all about strategies. And, and that's another thing I love about Pokemon. <sighs> Sorry, all these notifications pop up and I have no idea to get rid of them. But anyway, that's another thing I really love about Pokemon is it's a game that not only, you know, you have to, you know, figure out like certain puzzle aspects or you have to get this to get that and all that kind of stuff. But when it comes to battling, you really have to think and say okay the opponent's using this what can i do to do you know that kind of thing and it's, it's it's fun sometimes it can be challenging of course but that's the whole aspect of it and that's what makes it fun 
So yeah, when it comes to gym leaders, um, like right now they're showing Faulkner. Everyone had a favorite gym leader. I don't know. I would say in Crystal, my favorite gym leader in here was actually Jasmine. She was pretty damn cool. I like the fact that she's like this gentle, quiet girl who cares so much for Pokemon, especially Amphi that's in the lighthouse, that you turn around and battle it. Who does she have? A big ass Steelix. It's just, it's a perfect balance. I just love it. And while she was kind of easy to beat for me because I had a Azumarill and Typhlosion at that time because I trained my ass off. Like, I would fight so many trainers and my Pokemon, so I was kind of like trying to, you know, get to the level that I can beat her. And I didn't really have that much problem beating her, especially since Steel type was just introduced. So I had to find out that fire is weak to steel and so on water. So I figured that out and I was able to beat her. Like I said, the gym leaders in this game, they're decent. They're decent. I give it to them, but. <laughs> she, it's coming. It's coming soon. So right now they're doing Bugsy. Bugsy was kind of challenging for me, even though I did have a Pidgeotto as well as um um like this person. Um, um this is Mixelli's video. Shout out to Mixelli. Your videos are awesome. And he's using his Pidgeotto. I had a Pidgeotto too because I don't need to fly and type on the team. So I was like, why not Pidgeotto? Pidgeotto is the OG. I have to use it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so, yeah, that Scyther's a bitch. Like, that Scyther's a pain in the padded ass. If you don't know what you're doing, that thing will kick your ass. It's really annoying. I noticed that most of the gym leaders, their ace Pokemon, which is the one that they, they're best known for, their, their ace, I call them the ace Pokemon. Like, uh, Bugsy Scyther, Morty's Gengar, that type of thing, that's their ace Pokemon. Jasmine Steelix, that's the one that you know is going to pack a punch and that's going to give you the most trouble out of all of their Pokemon. So Scyther here was a pain. I mean, and I, here's the funny thing. I had Quilava at the time and it was still a pain to beat. I was like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> Come on. But I eventually beat Bugsy and it was a funny thing way back when people used to think Bugsy was a girl, but no, Bugsy's a boy, he is a boy. In the anime, he is a boy, not a girl. Just because he has long hair doesn't make him a girl. I don't know why people thought that, but whatever. To be honest, I forgot who I had on my team by memory because it was so long ago. And to be honest with you, and I wish I would have brought it up here since I'm talking about it, I still have my copy of the game. I didn't sell it at all. I still have it. I was not getting rid of that. That was my, like I said, that was my first legit copy of a Pokemon game I ever owned. And I am not getting rid of it. I still got it downstairs. And if I was thinking correctly, I should have brought it up so I could show you guys. But it's cool. I know y'all believe me. Okay, now we get into where things are good when it comes to talking about gym leaders. How many of y'all out there who play the game had a problem, I mean even in Gold and Silver, had a problem with Whitney? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Whitney was the most annoying gym leader in this fucking region. And that's no joke. She's a padded pain in the ass. Oh God, she frustrated me. She whipped my ass the first time I went up against her. And like I said, I didn't know too much about type matchups, so I didn't know that fighting type Pokemon were strong against normal. So I got my ass kicked. So what I had to do is keep training my Quilava, keep training, 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 and eventually we did beat her, but it was not easy. I was spamming them super potions like crazy because of this bitch. Sorry. And that fucking devil Pokemon. Hold on. That Pokemon right there, that Miltank, that's the devil. Don't let that cute face fool you. That's the fucking devil right there. That thing will destroy you if you're not well prepared. For anyone who has not played the gold, silver, crystal, or even the remakes of um, these games, Heart Gold, Soul Silver, this fucking thing is going to tear your ass apart if you don't come prepared. And that's what I, I had to learn the hard way. But hey, it's a learning experience, you know? So, yeah. But you're a fucking devil, Miltank. You're the fucking devil. Anyway. Yeah, so that's what I was talking about. Out of every gym leader that I have faced, out of all eight of them, Whitney. She gave me the most trouble and I put Claire in a close second because that Kingdra was a bitch. It really was. 
But yeah, it's good memories. I also remember um, I had a very, very tough time when um, after Mahogany Town, after you beat Price and you're going on to Blackthorn City, I had a very, very tough time in the ice cave or whatever you call the ice path. I had a tough time with that puzzle because what you had to do was push all those boulders with your Pokemon strength move down in the holes to make a barrier like thing so you can bounce off and get to the middle of that fucking thing so you can get up to the ladder. But that was a headache for me when I first played my first playthrough of the game. That was a fracking headache for me. Oh, I remember I was so frustrated. I got frustrated to the point where I took a break from the game for a while. And I actually bought the, back then they had the prima, you know, the guides, the big books, the walkthroughs, so they show us what to do. And I had to look through that a couple of times because I was just so frustrated. See, back then we didn't have YouTube and all that to look up gameplay and probably if you had to get stuck or whatever. We didn't have all that shit back then. So I had to look in the guide and figure out how the fuck do you get past this shit. And I'm like, okay, got it. But it was still frustrating to go through that. That's just some good memories. Um... Let's see, what else can I talk about about Pokemon Crystal? Oh, I also did like the um, the day and night function because that was the first time that was implemented. Um, with the addition of these games, Gold, Silver, and Crystal, there was a lot of new things being introduced. Like, like I said, the female protagonist, the day and night system, baby Pokemon. Oh, I was so happy when I heard about baby Pokemon. Once you get to Goldenrod City, you get an egg from the couple, um, the daycare couple. And it's a mystery egg, so you don't know what baby Pokemon's gonna pop out. I remember I got the egg, right? When I got the egg, I was like, oh, egg, egg, egg! And I kept, like, I got the bike, and I was just riding around to, to help it hatch faster, and I was hoping I'd get a Pichu. Out of all of them, I wanted Pichu, because I love electric Pokemon, and Pichu is just the cutest thing. All the baby Pokemon are cute, but I really, really, really wanted, um, I really, really, really wanted Pichu. But unfortunately, it didn't go the way I wanted it, and I ended up getting a Tyrog instead. And I was just, I remember being so mad. I was like, dang it, I wanted Pichu! Until I learned about breeding and all that other stuff. Then I got my Pichu eventually, so there you go. But that was, that, that was a cute memory. I have a lot of good memories in that game. I also like the bug catching contest. I like the little side things you can do. The bug catching contest was a lot of fun. Where you go into National Park and they give you a couple of Pokeballs, special sport balls or whatever you call it. And you go out there and you try to catch the best, biggest bug Pokemon you can find and see if you can win a prize. If you won first place, you got a Sunstone. And that was ideal if you had a Vileplume, I mean not Vileplume, a Gloom, that you want to evolve into Blossom or whatever. Also, speaking of that, there were a lot of new evolutions in the game as well, like, um... For instance, like I said, like I just mentioned, Blossom evolving from Gloom. Before it was just Vileplume. Also, Espeon Number Hour were introduced in this, um, in this region too, so that was great. And that's when I first fell in love with Umbreon. Unfortunately, I never owned one in the game. I wish I had, but it's okay. It, it's cool. But a lot of new things were implemented into, into the games, and that's what made it even more exciting. Um, let's see. What else? The only thing that kind of, like, one of the things that disappointed me was Marie was nowhere to be found in this. In Gold and Silver, Mareep was easy to find, but in Crystal, it was completely gone. Like, if you wanted a Mareep, you had to trade for it, and that was saddening. I love Mareep. <laughs> yeah, so, um, let's see, what else can we talk about? There's a lot of things about with Crystal, but it holds a very, very dear place in my heart, being the very first Pokemon game I have ever owned, and I'm so happy that I actually still have the cartridge, and I decided not to sell it or get rid of it. That made me even more happy and I'm, you know, I just look at it and sometimes I pick it up and I look at it and I'm like, we had a lot of good memories. I don't even think, I think I still have my data all on there. I think, I don't remember if I did or not. I don't, I don't think I, I don't think I did. I think I still have all my data on there. I haven't played it, of course, in a while. But, yeah, it's a great game to me. It'll always be one of my favorite Pokemon games ever. So, yeah. And if I get the chance to play it again one of these days, maybe, we'll see, it'll be like a nostalgia trip. Oh, one more thing I'd like to talk about before I end this video about how awesome this game is. Uh, you can travel to freaking Kanto! 
in this game. After you defeat all the gym leaders and beat the Elite Four, after that, you can go to Kanto and challenge the gym leaders there. The OG gym leaders, Brock, Misty, Sabrina, Blaine, all of them you can fight. The only change is Koga. Koga got transferred to the Pokemon League, so his daughter Janine took over, but she's still pretty decent. I'll give her that much. But still, it's just exciting that you can travel between regions. Oh, uh, hello, ding dong, bring this back. Uh, out of all the features in Pokemon, this is the one they need to bring back. Because, let's be honest guys, after the post game, what do you usually do after the post game in Pokemon? After you defeat the Elite Four and all that? Battle friends? Whoopee! They need to bring that back. Wouldn't it be so cool if you could travel to the other previous regions and, and go and, 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 you know, battle their gym leaders and, and all? Wouldn't that not be awesome? And it would provide even more hours of after game content it would, that would keep you coming back. But no, they haven't done it yet. I really hope they do something like that. Maybe in the new games in Sword and Shield, maybe we'll get that. Maybe, um,. When, when you finish the actual um, journey, the main game, and the post game, maybe you can go to some island where you can take on new challenges, something like that. Bring this back, Game Freak! <laughs> yes, please bring it back. Bring it back. Oh, and also, never let your mom, um, never let your mom save your money. Because all she's going to do is just freaking um, spend it. Like, do y'all remember that? It's just is so annoying. That shit was irritating. Every time I have money, this bitch, she come and spend my money talking about, hello? She'd be like, hello, quiz? Um, I spent your money on a dollar. I spent your money on, I'm like, mom, why you spend my money? I told you to save my money, what the fuck? <laughs> but it is, I could go on and on all day. But I'm going to end the video here because, you know. This is pretty much a lot. I mean, like I said, this I, I can go on and on for days, but I don't want to talk your ears off too much. Just know that Pokemon Crystal will always hold a special place in my heart. Out of all the Pokemon games that came out, Crystal will always hold a special place in my heart. And I'll always love my Cyndaquil forever. <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching another episode of MBMs, one of my butterfly me goose favorite games. Tune in next time where I'll go into another game that I like. I'm still trying to decide which next game I'll talk about, but you know, I'm gonna find something. So stay tuned for that, guys. Also, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all that other jazz. You know how it is. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching and take care. And also, I'm gonna pin a comment down below. If you have any fond memories of any of the Pokemon games that you had, what was your favorite Pokemon game? Which one was your first? Who was your starter? Yada, yada, yada. I'll leave that down in the comments below. <laughs> anyway, guys, take care, and I'll see you soon. This is Malay Butterfly Miku saying bye, guys.